Within ASAP, among the many calculations you can do are CIE analysis or chromaticity calculations. So what I'm going to do is bring in a system where we're going to define a set of LEDs. We're going to enter the relative weightings of the different LEDs and let ASAP trace the rays through these LEDs and then we'll perform the CIE analysis. In this particular case, what we want to do is enter the LED flux weights relative to green. So for the red weight, maybe a factor of 1.1, the green weight would have a factor of 1, and the blue weight a factor of 0.8. The program will allow me to enter up to five LEDs and the relative weights of the LEDs. It's a white LED, so what we're going to do is enter the relative intensity to green of the red, green, and blue wavelengths. I'm going to select the first of the three LEDs, and then I'll go through and enter the relative weights for all of them. Obviously, if I entered different relative weights, I would get different chromatic results at the end, but let's be somewhat consistent for now. So now I've entered that we're going to use three LEDs, and the relative weighting is 1.1 for the red and 0.8 for the blue relative to the green wavelength. I'm just going to come down on my dialog box and click on OK. Within ASAP, you can create any number of similar dialog boxes, so whenever you create a file, you can ask the user to give whatever input is necessary. That way you're not restricted to having a given set of parameters for a particular file. Now what we see is a random distribution of the rays of the different wavelengths from the three LED sources starting with the red rays and then the green followed by the blue. And they will be colored coordinately on the drawing. As you can see, as we only chose to use three of the five LEDs, we're not completely and uniformly illuminating across our detector. And we'll see the result of that in the calculations. Now we're going to look at an irradiance calculation measured at the wall or detector surface. And what we're actually doing is plotting the irradiance right on top of the system geometry. Now let's look at the CIE color analysis. This is the CIE color analysis dialog box. And within this, you can choose to use any of the three CIE standard models, the 1931, 64, or 76. And you can either choose the 2-degree or the 10-degree observer model, whichever is appropriate. There are several color systems available. Uh, Dell, NTSC, EBU, SMPTE, as well as short and long persistent systems. You can choose to display the gamut, the actual color range for any particular color system, and you can also set a gamma point. Additionally, you can choose the appropriate observer white point for your system, and you can choose any available object within your ASAP file or the sources themselves to perform the analysis on. What we're going to do is look at the data on the wall. And other than that, we will accept the defaults. And now let's just click on OK. And ASAP will provide to us our CIE analysis. And here's the results of the CIE analysis. I'm going to do is temporarily make this screen a little bit larger so we can see some more of it. We see three different pieces of information, but they're all interrelated. This is your typical CIE plot. This black line indicates our illuminant for the de-illuminant. And here's our black body point. These gray area here represents the sum of all of the rays and their different color. And they're all concentrated in this region around white. And we see similar here. Because we did not fully cover the board uniformly, we don't have pure white, but we're reasonably close. And you'll notice that there is, as I move my cursor and select different pixels in the chroma curve, the black highlighted arrowhead is moving within this plot, and also the highlighted line in the data is also moving. All of these are indicating the same pixel on my detector. So if I look at, for instance, one of the pixels that looks somewhat white, I'll notice my RGB values are all very close to 255. And we can get the Cartesian coordinates 
and the tri-stimulus values, as well as the CIE LAB coordinates as well for any of these points. And this is where that point is located on the chroma data graph itself. If I select one of these points that looks more on the reddish side, we, and we look at the data, we see that indeed the red is high, the blue is also somewhat high, but there's very little green. And if we go to one of the bluer points, we see the same type of effect. Again, more sampling, a better fill of the detector surface would have given us a greater appearance of white, if you will. But this gives us an idea of what would happen if we had those three LEDs shining upon this gypsum wallboard.